Hey everybody, welcome to AI Goes to the Movies Part 2. Do <laughs> Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's what it? But do. That but was, do. Was that one? What? What was that? What was that? I don't even uh, remember. D. Parody. Yeah. It was D, Charlie that's... Sheen. Wasn't it the Charlie Sheen like uh, Rambo style one? Yeah. One of those yeah. movies. And, do. So, welcome to AI Goes to Movies Part Do. Today yeah. we dive into the intriguing world of AI-powered recommendation en engines. These behind-the-scenes algorithms have become the unsung heroes of our digital age, shaping our entertainment choices and in influencing pop, pop culture in ways that we never thought possible. From Netflix to Spotify, these AI-driven platforms are redefining how we discover and consume content while raising questions about the consequences of pers personalization, echo chambers, and the evolving role of technology in our lives. Join us as we embark on this journey, exploring the impact of AI-powered recommendations. Hey, what's happening, Josh? Oh, not much. I'm just going to jump right into the AI-powered recommendation engines and examine how platforms like Netflix and Spotify have shaped pop culture through the personalization of content that we consume. I'm sure you're noticing it. But we're also going to delve into the potential consequences such as echo chambers and over personalization or someone else using your Netflix account and personalizing <laughs> it. Don't you notice when that happens? Hate it. Anyway, I'll start off with my our... account. Josh, everybody <laughs> uses my account. I yeah. Just... Yeah. So it's like, oh, I didn't know I was watching this Japanese anime. Anyway, I'll start off with one of our. Uh, AI powered recommendation engine stories. We're going to start off first with Netflix recommendation algorithm, which accounts for 80% of the discovery on their platform. So it's had an ex a significant impact on pop culture. And that's where shows like Stranger Things and The Queen's Gambit gain their popularity from. They were not predicted to be these huge things, but they actually ended up the algorithm started recommending Stranger Things. And as these things snowballed, they really became major hits. The Queen's Gambit. I remember friends of mine talking about it. I'm like, what do you mean? And then I see it yeah. number one and I'm like, I guess I have to watch have this. To. And I'm glad it knew I would want to watch it. That's where yeah. their success came from. Stranger Things. Stranger Things, same thing. You, you got a buzz about it. And it just, you know, the show just gained this huge following and became a pop culture phenomenon. And it's because of Netflix recommendation algorithm and it contributed that. Now, again, it had all the cool elements. It had nostalgia, mystery, science fiction, which it knew I liked. So it showed it to me and therefore several other people, especially hey. our generation, Gen Xers with the Dungeons and Dragons. And think of all the keywords and all the references in that the t -shirts. show. T-shirts. Yep. That, that, yeah, exactly. The, all the, you know, the, you know, Zeppelin, Metallica, you know, you had mm -hmm. everything in there and it really just, it, it it really it recommended it based on these algorithms so therefore this huge success the queen's gambit you know this limited series of walt walter tevis's 1983 novel of the same name it was released in 2020 and it told the story of beth Harmon, an orphan chess prodigy in her journey i did, were you what, like me and had to look up and see if this was a true story and like it was you know it was really uh, dude i was even one step like further away from that when everybody's talking about it and it's popping up the algorithm's popping it up for me everybody's talking about it i'm like i don't get it i'm like an often chess i'm like yeah yeah it just I, I was boom i was sucked in i thought it was yeah awesome. and it kept pushing it it knew you were gonna like it and it was right that's what that's what makes these so popular it also is what makes it so addictive because it 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 just mm -hmm. literally knows what you want to see next you know, and they talk about these algorithms and we'll get into those later, how TikTok and Instagram reels and all that stuff starts to learn the same thing. So AI is being used there too, but we're not going to talk about that. Aren't you going to talk about Shopify or Spotify? <laughs> uh, yes. So I'm going to move to Spotify, Josh, but I don't even know. This doesn't really count as AI going to movies, but I think we're close enough, right? Yeah. Music, movies. It's right? entertainment. Anyway, that's right. Regardless, this is a relatable example that spotlights recommendations. Spotify's Discover Weekly pay playlist is a prime example of AI-driven personalization. By analyzing uh, users' listening habits, the platform, Spotify, curates a weekly pay uh, playlist tailored to individual tastes, and it helps us find new mu music and artists that we 
um, might not have discovered uh, otherwise. Anyway, it, it um, doesn't find me new music. It finds me all the Queen's Reich and Iron Maiden and Sabotage I want to listen to. Okay, keep going. Okay, but Josh, I agree with. I, I don't use Spotify, but after you know doing this research for this, I want to check it out because I use uh, YouTube Music, which used to be Google Music, and yeah. the same thing happens to me. I like I listen to like uh, My Chemical Romance and uh, The Offspring, and it's constant. I'm like. Find me stuff like this, and it just sends me the same stuff. So I want to check out um, this um, Spotify's Discover Weekly playlist because I want some, you know, some new stuff. Yeah. No, you know, I'm going to give you a quick little story. Uh, YouTube um, had recommended something to me, uh, a Scorpion song that I had never heard before in my entire life. Really? And, yeah, and it was a song from the set early 70s. And I was the sales of Sharon is the name of the song. And I was like, it was like, an, like, why have I never heard this song before in my life? I was angry. I had never heard it before in my life because the guitar playing, it was so cool, but it recommended it thought I'd like it. And oh my gosh, I was like, I, I then of course made everyone I know, listen to it. And they were just like, that's the scorpions. I'm like, yeah, but listen to it. Anyway, long story short, it recommended okay. it. And that was new. Yeah, so uh, that's a that's a really good story to support this. And I'm surprised. Like I I would figure you're so, you're such a uh, you're so good with like pop culture, especially nostalgia stuff from the 80s 90s. I figured if I said uh, a Scorpion song that nobody's ever heard of, that you would be able to rattle off every one of them. Yeah, yeah. this was a little predating me. This would have been I would have been about three years old, and my mom definitely was not listening to the Scorpions. However, the Scorpions they yeah. weren't that old, dude. No. They're bet, dude. That's what I didn't know. They go back to the early seventies. Like they've really? been around. Yeah, no, yeah. I didn't look oh, it I up. Have to look that. I am. I'm gonna make a yeah. note. Look it up. All right, so, Joe. Yeah. So Josh, I have another cool story for you that illustrates the impact of personalization and you you finding this new Scorpion song. Right. So yeah. in 2015, an indie mu an indie musician named Annabelle Jones, who has a song called Magnetic. Do you know it? No, but it must be magnetic. It's magnetic. Um, anyway, it gained massive popularity, primarily due to its inclusion in Spotify's Discover Weekly playlist. As a result, she was propelled into the limelight, eventually signing a deal with Atlantic Records, and her music was introduced to thousands of Spotify users who might have otherwise never discovered her work. And thanks to the pay, uh, power of AI uh, personalization, everybody other than you and I know about her. The same thing with uh, the Scorpions that they were at in the early seventies. <laughs> anyway, so their their Spotify's Discover the Weekly algorithm, which is tough to say, it analyzes, as you can imagine, user data, including the songs that have recently streamed, songs they've added to their playlist, and the music that their friends listen to. So Spotify has that social aspect to it. Then the algor algorithm delves into the platform's vast music library, and it compares users' taste to those of others with similar preferences. Uh, this re results in a in a finely curated playlist that we can now learn new music from. Anyway, yeah. so uh, uh, go ahead, Josh. This is a good thing, right? You know, because <laughs> and let's just wrap up here the pros of this. So you have improved decision making. So AI driven analytics help the studios make data driven decisions about their marketing and distribution strategies, leading to more effective campaigns and better allocation of resources. That's good from the business side. It's also mm -hmm. accurate forecasting. So you can predict box office performance and allow the studios to manage expectations and adjust their budgets accordingly. And this helps minimize the financial risks to these companies. That's a good thing for them. And audience engagement. By understanding the factors that drive audience interest, studios can create content that better resonates that will like better. So that's good for us as well. But tell us about some of these cons, Dean. All right. So you and I have talked about some of these. Uh, one is, uh, we see this in the news all the time, right? Is echo chambers. So I just mentioned um, My Chemical Romance and um, The Offspring, right? So I get stuff like that all the time and I'm kind of tired of it, right? Uh, so that's one of the problems is over personalization can lead to an, e an echo chamber where users are only exposed to content that aligns with their existing interests or beliefs if it's news. And it limits the exposure uh, to a more diverse perspective and ideas. Um, I wonder if we relied on AI, would we ever have had the song like Bohemian Rhapsody? Yeah, you know, that's a great question because 
I love that story. And I love, like, in the movie, which is supposed to be based on real life. I've heard that. But when they walk into the record studio and go, I got this great song. You have to hear it. And they were just like, get out. We're done with you. We're going to drop uh-huh. you. So, yeah, you're yeah. right. Like, would that ever, would AI, or would AI know that? Uh, hey, yeah, actually, that's a good, maybe, uh, yeah. maybe the, the GPT-5 will yeah. Uh, <clears throat> we'll have to get past 4.12345678 p.m. But mm-hmm. next, what else? All is right, there? so uh, another con is underrepresentation of niche content, which um, we could say Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody would have been at some point niche content because it was different. Anyway, AI recommend, recommendations tend to prioritize popular content with wide appeal, right? This is what this group of friends is listening to. This is what this group of friends is listening to. So it might potentially leaving niche or less mainstream content underrepresented uh, and harder to discover. So my third uh, con, Josh, is uh, loss of serendipity. I just like saying that word. It's kind of like hippopotamus. Is that a band? Loss of serendipity? (laughs) No, but it sounds like a good band name. It should be. Yeah. Anyway, uh, loss of serendipity. With AI-driven recommendations, users might miss out on the serendipitous discovery of content that doesn't necessarily align with usual preferences, uh, but that still could be enjoyable or thought provoking. Yeah, and I, and Dean, I think again, you know, people complain about how long our 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 podcast. Actually, they just complain because they're like, "What are you guys doing? Why do you talk to each other in the afternoon?" But we do. So there you have it. And there's our. I don't, AI know, if I don't know if anybody's complaining other than us. Yeah, we're the only one watching our video, so that's good. So we're we'll trying anyway, to get some track. Man. There's a digital. That's oh yeah, that's true. My, it's probably the ghost of my mother watching some of these. Uh, did she, does she have, anyway, does she have there, thousands of accounts? So maybe, maybe. So there's our AI recommendations. You know, you got a digital genie that knows us better than we know ourselves. It can whisk us away to a personalized adventure through music, movie, and more. And wasn't it wonderful having it during the last couple of years when you were stuck at home and you had you could mindlessly watch till you reached the end of Netflix? But beware, because too much personalization of this magic might lead us down a rabbit hole of echo chambers and limited horizons. Because who doesn't like living in their own bubble where you're the most amazing and everything you think is right? So let's embrace the power of AI recommendations while occasionally venturing off the beaten path. Step outside our comfort zones. I really like to uh, just when you... My YouTube makes it pretty hard to figure out. I use YouTube as the example because that's where I look most things up or look up shorts for movies to see what I would like. And Mm -hmm. I like, I I go off on, I I will go off on a wormhole looking up some crazy stuff. So I'll get some crazy recommendations. And that's what we're really telling you here. Every once in a while, get outside your box and look, maybe throw the AI a curveball just to to see if it (laughs) figures out, you know, Throws well, you and I cool. have a daily curveball because everybody in your family and everybody in my family uses my profile in the 500 streaming services that I have. So yeah, but I'm getting I Hallmark get... movies, so that's not a good thing. But anyway, <laughs> stay tuned for our next episode where we will continue the exploration of the captivating world of artificial intelligence. Until then, stay curious and happy discovering. And I'm going to add one thing. Um, I hope AI recommends us. Yeah. To other people. It has been, I saw. <laughs> yeah, it has it been, has. I saw. It has been, I saw. It has, it has been. been. All right. It has, has been. been, I saw. Yeah. All right. Awesome. That was great, Josh. Hey, see you, everybody. Bye.